In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at an external tool called AutoPan. It's available from the people at New Blue Effects, and you see the website here on the screen where you can purchase it if you want to. It does not come as part of PowerDirector, but it's a toolkit that many find useful. AutoPan is part of their Video Essentials 7 package that you see on the screen. From time to time, we'll be looking at these external options and finding out if some of them might be worth adding to your copy of PowerDirector. So we're going to focus in this tutorial on AutoPan. I have on the screen an image of an apple in a tree. And we're going to use that and apply AutoPan to this. How do you do that? I'm going to click on the effects, or I can press the F4 key on the upper left side of my panel. The next thing we're going to do is change from all content. I'm going to go to my new blue video essentials 7 and then sim simply drag down the auto pan and drop it right on top of my image. Auto pan has some nice features. Let me show you a couple of them. To find out what they are, we click on the effect button above the timeline. We have a host of elements here. New Blue recommends that when you start using AutoPan, you click the Setup View button. Immediately, the preview screen will turn red. That's because this is showing you the ending position of the pan. The end screen is shaded in red. The start screen is shaded in blue. So when I click on my End Position button, that will open up another screen, and in this screen, which I have applied a grid to by clicking the grid in the lower right corner, it centers it. I can move it, and as I move it off center, you notice it shrinks, but it will never go beyond the edge of my image, which is a real nice feature. So I'm going to put it about here to the left side of the apple, but I want it smaller yet. How do I change that? I'll click on OK. And here we have the end zoom. We also have a start zoom. They both start full screen. As I move the slider to the right, it will shrink the end zoom. The maximum reduction is 200. It will never totally disappear. But right now I've put it at 195. And so they recommend that you set up these two screens for end and start. What are the hold? Well, the hold is the number of seconds you want the image to stop animating or I would say freezing. What I have found is that this number is supposed to be seconds but in my copy of PowerDirector it doesn't work out that way. I'm not sure exactly why. Maybe it didn't translate right when incorporated into PowerDirector. But this doesn't give me true seconds or even true frames. So I'm not exactly sure how to apply that one. But I will move it about in the middle so you can see what it does. Then when you're done with your setup, you turn the colors off by unchecking the box. Let's go to movie mode, and then we'll play this and we'll see what happens. We started out full screen, and then we zoom in on the apple and some of the leaves to the left of it. And then it will freeze because I have a hold number set near 100. And in this case, on this 15 second clip, uh, that gave me about four seconds of hold, it looks like. And notice it's always in frame. You never have to worry about that. To edit that at any time, you click on the clip that contains the effect and click on the Effect button. We can also do some rotation. Uh, and we can also change the end position or the start position as much as we want. We click on the position button again. And now I can move the move it over here and click on OK. Again, I didn't turn the setup view on. I don't have to, but it's helpful if you do. Now I see it doesn't include the apple. So I'm going to zoom out again. And now I have it on the right margin of my end screen. So it's a nice preview option we have here. I'll turn it off so I can see the real thing. Go back to the first frame and play my movie. And here we're zooming in. There are some other features that you have with this new blue auto pan. 
that I want to pay a, a few moments of attention to. I'm going to stop that. If you look on the lower left corner, it says default. Here I have a whole set of options of other kinds of panning. I'm going to reset my entire panning and just pick a couple of these. We can go from top left. I click on that one. And now when I click on the, the movie mode, we find it will start with the top left and then go down to full screen. We can do the same with some of the other tools available. If I click on Effect again, I can go top right, left to right, left to right, tight, opposite corners. I can reset it to none. I want to make sure everything is clear. I can tilt in, tilt out, twist in, zoom out, swoop up or down. Let's try swoop up and click on our movie mode. And when we play this, these are some of the defaults. Now the nice thing is, is you can combine these default elements with the other elements that we've looked at earlier in terms of where the screen starts and where the screen stops. For example, I'm going to click on my effects. I've got swoop up, but we're going to change the end zoom so it's tighter. And I can also change the end position if I want to. Move down a little bit. Click on OK. And now I'm combining the tools in the drop down with the other tools that are available. So when we change this, oops, I have to turn off my preview here. Go back to our movie mode. Now we have a combination where we're using the tools available in the drop down plus the other tools available on the main edit screen. So there are lots of features and lots of variations you can bring to your panning and zooming using this tool called AutoPan, part of the Video Essentials 7 package from New Blue Effects. Mm -hmm.